Hey guys, welcome back to Shop Life. Today we're gonna to be taking apart this intake manifold as the second part of the engine disassembly series for the E46 M54. Once again, this engine is out of a 2001 BMW 330 convertible. Your engine might be a little different depending on what year it came out of. And this procedure is a little similar to the M52 as well. So if you do have that and you're trying to use it as a reference, uh, it should be very similar. In the last video, we did an overview of the entire engine. Pretty much what you see here, everything that's on the outside, what's bolted on. I also, uh, I also showed what all I had already taken off. So we're gonna go ahead and actually start doing some work on this engine today. Um, I already have an actual video on this, on the stuff that I'm about to do that was with the engine inside of the car. Uh, it was actually on an E39, I believe, which is still pretty similar. So if you guys need to reference anything in terms of it being in the car, you guys can reference that video. So we're gonna be taking off this intake manifold. All right, so the tools you're gonna need for this it's just a basic socket set with metric sockets. Uh, you're gonna also need a torque set and a flathead screwdriver. And uh, if you have a pick or something like that, like a small little sharp object, that'll help out as well. So we're gonna start off with is on the side of this engine. As you can see, I've already removed the diesel valve, the intake boot that goes to the throttle body and the idle control valve. And then we also have some of the vacuum lines and the uh, actual purge valve line also has already been removed. The coolant stuff has already been removed on this side and the vacuum lines like i said from the back have also been removed so let's go ahead and start by loosening this oil dipstick tube uh, just held in with a 13 millimeter bolt on the bottom here's the bolt for the oil dipstick tube with that out of the way we can just scoot it out all right so now we're going to go ahead and remove this harness box or at least unhook all the connectors and just get this free so we can get the throttle body and the idle control valve off. So as you can see, it's gonna be held in with a 10 millimeter bolt right here, a 10 millimeter nut that goes on top of the idle control valve, and then another 10 millimeter nut that attaches to the throttle body. So what you're gonna to wanna to do first is unplug the throttle body. And then you can go ahead and unplug the idle control valve. If you're having trouble with the idle control valve, just push this tab down and then use a flathead and pry the connector off. And you would also have a connector for the diesel valve, uh, which you should already remove as well. Unhook the purge valve. And you're also gonna have a connector for the alternator. And all these connectors are practically the same style with this metal bracket that you just push down and then you pull the connector off. Now we're gonna go ahead and take off those 10 millimeter bolts and nuts. So here are the bolts, well the bolt and the nuts that attach that harness box to the throttle body and to the idle control valve and the actual intake manifold itself. There's another connector down here. This one is for the camshaft position sensor, the one that's on the intake side. You can go ahead and cut this zip tie that's actually there from the factory. You can unhook all the vacuum lines if you want. Uh, let me go ahead and show you guys how they're routed. So this vacuum line right here on the top right, it actually attaches to this box. You may or may not have this box depending on the year of your car as well as the model. If you don't have it, you should have a cap that just blocks it off. Uh, for us, we have it, so we're just gonna pull it off. And as you see, it's crumbling, and it's probably already a vacuum leak with that. Now we can go ahead and unhook this connector. This big connector actually goes to the uh, fuel rail and it actually attaches to the uh, injectors. So we'll be removing that after. Let's go ahead and actually pull the rest of this off though. All right, so now we have two more connectors that actually attach to the oil filter housing itself. One in the back. And you have one on the top. And you have this last connector that goes all the way around to the other camshaft position sensor and the thermostat. It 
It also attaches to the vanos. In order to get these connectors through here, we're going to have to remove this power steering reservoir, which is held in with two 13 millimeter bolts right attached to the oil filter housing. So someone's actually replaced one of the bolts. This is the aftermarket bolt right here, but this is what the OEM bolt should look like. It should be silver and it's a 13 millimeter bolt with a washer attached to it. And then here's the harness. Now we're going to go and remove this canister, which is held in with a 13 millimeter nut. Now you have better access to the connectors that go to the starter and the one that actually goes to the oil level sensor which is attached to the bottom of the oil pan near the drain bolt. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually taking off the entire harness. You don't necessarily have to do this when you're removing the intake manifold. I'm doing this so you guys can see where all these connectors go and just so you can see how it is taken off. Just in case you need to replace the harness for any reason. So this connector is different than the other ones. Uh, you actually have to push the two sides in. Once you push the two sides in, then you can pull the connector off. And it's also clamped in onto the oil pan with this little metal clip. Now you have another, this is the actual crankshaft position sensor. And this one also, just you push the tab and then you pull it off. So this sensor, the crankshaft position sensor, is right near the starter. So if you were to access that, you would, it would be really hard to access that with the engine inside the car. Uh, you would have to remove the starter or at least the intake manifold and you could probably work around the starter. But this bolt right here, it tends to seize into the actual block itself. So you might have a hard time with that. If that does happen, uh, you're pretty much going to have to just sit there and waste a couple hours trying to get the rest of that bolt out. We have another connector for I believe it's a temperature sensor. And this one you just pull it off. It looks just like an O2 sensor. And that goes underneath the intake manifold to a little bracket. And you have to pull the connector out of the bracket and then you pull it off. Now the only thing we have here is two cables for the starter. One is held in with a 10 millimeter nut and the other one with the eight. The positive terminal that goes to the alternator is the one that's going to be up front. Then you have the one that goes to the actual terminal on the passenger side of the engine bay. That one goes in first. So this right here for the smaller wire that goes to the harness is an 8 millimeter nut. Now that we have that out of the way, the starter is actually free. Here's the harness with all the connectors removed. Now only thing that's attached is the fuel rail and the connectors for the injectors. So we're gonna go in and remove those. All right, so what we have here is the fuel rail connector box right here. We have this temperature sensor attached to the back. We're gonna go ahead and pull that off. There we go. Now here is the actual fuel line. This goes to the fuel line that's coming from the fuel pump and it attaches to the fuel rail right here. It's just held in with a little quick connect if you want to remove that. And we have a little bracket holding it in. You just pry on the tab, push that down, and pull the hose out. So here's the quick connect I was talking about. All you have to do is you have to push this in. This is the same way for the power steering uh, lines and the transmission fluid lines in the front where, the, where it attaches to the radiator. Now we're going to go to the top of the engine and remove the fuel rail uh, connectors from the injectors. There's a connect, another connector right here. And one more right here. This is the IAT sensor. Uh, it's called the intake air temperature sensor. 
These are also another source for a vacuum leak because there's the O-ring that attaches to there, which I'll show you guys once I remove the intake manifold. Now, to remove the connectors for the injectors, there's a metal clip that's got two ends. So you have to pry the ends off. So you see how it stays on the side right there? So you want to pry both of them to get, on, get to stay on the side. That way you can disconnect it by pulling it off. And this is why I was saying you would need a sharp thing like a pick so you could keep these pried off. You can also go ahead and remove these little clips for the O2 sensors. Just push it in and then you just pull it out. Do you smell that? Yeah. No, like a certain smell that the shop has. Yes, like old people. Like roses. <laughs> <laughs> Roses for old people. Every shop that we've had has had like a certain smell. Yep. The old, old shop, that was the nastiest. Yes. I don't even Those remember what that smell was. Cabinets, remember? Yeah, oh my god. Did I just say snakes? No, you said spiders. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. So here's the metal clips I was talking about. So when you pull these apart, it releases the clamp pretty much, just like that. And then you can pull off the whole connector. Just make sure you don't lose any of these pins. When you're reassembling it, you do not have to have them separated. You can just push it on and it'll work. So here's the entire harness. As you saw, the O2 sensors were already unhooked. Uh, I forgot to mention that in the overview video and at the beginning of this one. But if, you, if they were not unhooked for you, uh, all you have to do is just remove them and you can put them to the side or you can just pull them apart and that's how they unhook. There you have it. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and remove this fuel rail. Uh, if you still had the fuel line hooked up and all of that, and you were just trying to lift the fuel rail up and out of the way for temporary purposes, your best bet would be to release this straighter valve right here. So un pretty much unscrew this. And push down on that tab. Uh, hold it with like a microfiber or something because there's going to be a lot of pressure with a bunch of gas pouring out. So just go ahead and do that. That way you can release all the pressure and then we can remove the four bolts holding this fuel rail in. They're all four 10 millimeter bolts. All right, so we're gonna go and remove the four 10 millimeter bolts holding this fuel rail in. Now we can go ahead and pull the fuel rail up. The injectors will come out with it. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> <He> spit. <laughs> when you take off these fuel rails or the injectors, you are gonna need new O-rings, so make sure you have those with you before you start disassembling. Now what we have here are the bolts for the intake manifold. As you see, I have a bunch of dirt here. I would suggest you use a shop vac or something to vacuum all that up. That way it doesn't go inside the engine. All right, so this engine is pretty much toast and it's only f What? <laughs> Why are you laughing? You're so funny. What do you mean it's toast? All right. So this engine is pretty much toast and we're just using it for learning purposes. So we're gonna go ahead and just leave all the dirt there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, please just continue. <laughs> like I said, these are 11 millimeter nuts. Not that big. <laughs> <laughs> Can you stop? <laughs> All right, so we're actually gonna leave this throttle body and idle control valve on here when I remove the manifold. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys where the bolt is. There's one more nut holding the intake manifold in. It's a 16 millimeter nut. It's right here. This is the last 16 millimeter nut holding this whole intake manifold in. You can leave all this stuff attached. Of course, it'll be easier and you'll have more space to do stuff with it removed. But we're just gonna go in and remove this uh, cable that goes to the alternator. So if you need it, if you need a reference on how it's routed, it's routed behind this plastic coolant tube. So you just gotta get it out from underneath there and pull it through. 
and now you have that. One more thing, uh, this the CCV is right here. And like I said earlier, this is the tube that runs down to the oil dipstick. So we can go ahead and unhook that. So you just push these two tabs in, it releases it from the two sides, like that, and then you just pull it down. And now you have that unhooked as well. Now we can just remove the 16 millimeter nut and pull the whole intake manifold out. This is the last tube for the CCV hose that I had mentioned earlier, but I forgot to remove. It's the breather hose that goes to the valve cover. It's the same concept as that other one. You just push it down, and then you pull it apart. And there is the intake manifold. All right guys, so that's it for today's video. As you saw, we removed the intake manifold, the harness that attaches all over the intake manifold, and pretty much most of the engine. We got the fuel rail off, uh, the injectors, all that stuff that was attached to the fuel rail, and we got all those connectors off as well. Stay tuned for the next video in the series. Uh, we're gonna be removing more parts from the front of the engine, the valve cover and all that, and then we'll start working on the inner parts of the engine as well. So that's it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching, and feel free to leave any questions or any comments down below.